Have you ever had that one brilliant idea that you just had to bring to life immediately? Yeah, me too. After seeing this 30 day stretching challenge on socials, I decided to turn it into a stretch challenge app. Hi, I'm Lucas. I'm a solopreneur, which is basically a fancy word for I work alone and occasionally talk to my houseplants for a company. Today, you're about to see either the birth of the next billion dollar app or a spectacular digital dumpster fire. Here's how to build an app in just one week and what I'll do differently when I build my next app. So just the other day, I came across this post. So this guy does like foreigner lives in Korea kind of content and he gives himself these like 30 day challenges. So it's basically like little skills that you can learn in 30 days. This month, he's challenging himself to do a full split and it seems like a lot of people are following his journey. Then I also saw people joining in on the challenge. So I was like, this should be an app. And when you're making an app, you inevitably wonder if anyone's ever gonna use the app, which is why I always try to make sure that there's at least one person who would at least download. I kind of explained what the app is gonna be about to the guy who made the challenge, and he said, I would definitely download that. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not betting my life savings on one person's hypothetical download, but this product means a lot more than that. You see, my brain is like a startup incubator. Lots of promising concepts, bursts of initial enthusiasm, but a serious case of commitment issues. It's the classic ADHD dilemma. Starting projects is my superpower, finishing them is my kryptonite. And this idea seemed one of the more doable ones, just a camera and some notes. So I set myself just one goal, actually finish making an app without quitting halfway through. To start it off, I did a good old app store deep dive. I downloaded every stretching app I could find. The plan, keep the good, fix the bad. Turns out, most stretch apps can't even measure your splits. The best I could find, as you can see here, simply let you guess your angle. How scientific! Also, flexibility apparently comes at a price. Most apps hide behind a paywall. As both a user and a developer, I much prefer the freemium model. So that's what I'll be offering in my app. Some features free, some paid. A couple of hours later, wireframes are done. We've got lists of challenges, photo record grids, a camera view, and some social stuff. It's pretty rough. Think of it as sketch on a napkin level of detail. But that's what wireframing is all about, isn't it? Throwing features on a canvas as fast as you can. Now, I could dive deeper and explain the wireframe, but we'll be jumping right into high fidelity design in just a moment. Now that the wireframing is done, I have to come up with a more high fidelity design. Usually I would use Figma because that's like what every single designer uses, but I just heard about this new tool called Play. Basically, you do the design as you would do on Figma. Apparently, you can just play it like an iOS prototype from your design. So it works like this. I designed a basic carousel in Play, just like you would in Figma, just with your mouse, no coding needed. Then I can mirror it onto my phone and you have a functioning iOS app UI. The quick prototyping and a familiar design process was very appealing, but the element library was still quite limited. All in all, it's a really cool tool, but given my tight timeline, I'm putting play on the back burner for now, uh, but I'll keep an eye on it because it looks like it might come in handy for future projects. It's like flash flood. See the wind on the on the ground. Hey, they are fries.
Now, apart from the UIs, I also needed images for the front and side splits, so I turned to our AI overlord, Midjourney. The first batch, not bad. A quick background removal on Photoshop, and I had a Figma-ready perfection. But then when I asked for more in the same style, AI had a unique interpretation of human anatomy. These new figures looked less flexible and more in need of immediate medical attention. Now let's tour the app. First stop, the challenge screen. For now, it's a modest menu of two challenges. We're starting with splits, but in the future, I might add things like daily selfies to full body transformations. Each challenge has three states, not started, in progress, and completed. Once you join the challenge, tap daily to record your progress. The challenge view shows your flexibility journey at a glance. Each card displays your split angle, your personal flexibility scoreboard. Now, the star of the show, the record screen. It features a protractor UI for measuring your splits. For now, it's manual input only. If users like it, we might add computer vision later. Social features are on hold for now, keeping it lean for the first iteration. Since this is more like an MVP, I'm just focusing on the essentials and I'll build from there based on feedback. So I started coding about two years ago, which is just before ChatGPT got popular. Back then, it was still all Stack Overflow and praying someone else had already asked your embarrassingly basic question. Generative AI has certainly made coding more accessible. I mean, building an entire app in just a couple of days, that would have been a fantasy. So my approach usually is laying down all the UIs first and then adding the functionality and database. I was able to get the project set up and most of the UIs done here at the cafe. I'm using Cupertino Elements in Flutter for that iOS feel, which I think is the most efficient way to create a decent look. So next up, making them actually work. I have never built a camera function before, so I've whipped up this simple mock app that does one thing, take a photo, add a note, and save it locally. This little experiment is my way of testing the waters before using a new feature I've never built before. Here's the default camera view, and after shooting a photo, you see a note entry view, save it, and you've got a new note with a photo. You can even see the note details and category. Integrating this mock prototype into the main app's UI is surprisingly straightforward. You just have to ask AI to do it for you. When I used ChatGPT, I still had to make quite a few modifications to the results to avoid errors. But since switching to Claude, it's been much smoother. For simple projects like this, copying and pasting the code often works right out of the box. It's funny how choosing an AI is starting to feel like picking a clothing brand. Same basic function, but with different personalities and colors. Other than Claude being slightly more accurate, I just love its response since it feels warmer. I guess I'm a Claude person now. So the camera module in the main app is now done. So now when you press add record, you'll see this camera uh, on the top right, you can toggle this switch to turn on and off the protractor. And I'm very proud of this little UI. It's almost identical to the iPhone's main camera UI, where you can press on each button to choose the zoom. But when you pinch the screen, you can see the exact zoom scale on each button. And you can flip the camera here as well. I'm wrapping things up now. I'm adding the final touches with some list screens, a place to see your entire stretch history. And with just a bit more bug squashing and logic tweaking, here's the final result.
the finish line of this impulsive coding marathon. It's been a week of caffeine-fueled coding, questionable design choices, and a complete disregard for small details like, oh you know, monetization plans and audience research. But hey, who needs a business strategy when you have enthusiasm and a deadline? But you know what, for once I actually finished something. And not just finished, I published it on the App Store. It's like watching your awkward, poorly dressed child graduate. You're proud, but also very embarrassed. This app might not be the next big thing, but it's taught me a valuable lesson. Sometimes done is better than perfect. Or in this case, done is better than abandoned project number 374. Next time, we're aiming higher. We'll actually consider wild concepts like user needs and market viability and go to market. And the design, well, let's just say it won't look like it was created by a monkey. So stay tuned, next time we're building not just an app, we're crafting a digital masterpiece. Or at least something that doesn't make designers cry. Until then, keep stretching, keep coding, and remember, if I can finish a project, anything is possible. Ciao!